Welcome to Season 6, Episode 10 of The Chris Abraham Show. My name's Chris Abraham, and I think that I really haven't done any park run primer based on my park run experience. And even though I'm only, I'm under 10 volunteers and under 10 runs in, I thought I would share my experience. So... I had never heard anything, I had never heard anything about anything called a park run. In the past, I have participated in 5Ks. I have paid $35 or whatever to do a series of them. I've done a five miler. I've done things like that around town. Northern Virginia and DC are very active places for paid runs sponsored by places like pacers running and uh etc now when i was 350 pounds i was desperately wanting to get back into running and i realized that my favorite running technique is running between 13 and 16 minute miles what i called slow jogging slow jogging can even be slower than that it can be 20 19 18 17 minute miles and that's what i'm aspiring to but i never did anything about it and then i was watching a channel on youtube called ed bud and i think it's e d d b u d he is a eastern european looking i think his name's like ed but 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 badivsky badowski but bud weiserski or something He's an, he's a, um, he's a tall stripling of a man. Maybe he is, he calls himself lightweight, but I also think he's extremely tall. So Ichabod Crane-esque, and he's got a big nose and he's beautiful looking. And I started watching his videos as a result of getting into Michael Co, aka Kafuzi, and then getting into Seth Demore, and then finally getting into Ed Bud. Or maybe it was Kafuzi to Ed Bud to Seth Demore. That's my holy trinity of run channels, uh, run tube, shoe tube is what they call it. Uh, all three of them. I think my OG was Ginger Runner. I think the very first run channel. I ever watched was Ginger Runner, but that's neither here nor there. All roads ended up leading to Ed Budd, and Ed Budd lives in the UK, and he, um, as a result, lives in a small little hamlet, and in his small little hamlet, he has a running club. I think it's called Yodel or Yogel or Yodel or Yodel. Um, That's how his hamlet village sounds to me. And also in Yodel, 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 uh, there is a park run. And I found out that every Saturday, 52 Saturdays a year, minus a couple, I think minus like like Christmas and Thanksgiving or something, there are um, free, completely free, no strings attached, runs that are 5K and they're self-organized, self uh, self-volunteered and pretty sophisticated and they cost no money. Um, I, I was under the impression that the, uh, national health service NHS sponsored the British ones, but apparently it was started by just some lads in London who started it off. And now it's taken over great Britain. It's taken over the colonies. It's taken over South Africa and it's taken over uh, the East Coast and a lot of Canada. And I believe it's moving into the Midwest. 
But here in D.C., there are four of them. I believe that there is the Anacostia one. I believe that there's the College Park one. I believe that there is, oh, what is it called? Um, uh, it's um, uh, a boathouse that's, uh, that is in, um, on the towpath. Hey, Google, what is the park run on the towpath near Georgetown? On the website parkrun.us, they say, the course is at the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal towpath at 4940 Canal Road, N.W., Washington District of Columbia, 2007. Fletcher's Cove, Fletcher's Boathouse. It's very gravelly there. And then finally, closest to me, which is uh, five miles as the bicycle rides, is uh, all y'all know, all y'all know that, uh, that there is an island. Island in the stream. That is what we are. No, but there's several islands that are on the Potomac, one of which is uh, the Sisters, the Three Sisters Island. It's a bunch of little rocky things out there. But there's also, there, there's actually a, an, an island that is a private uh, club. And there is um, a national park called Roosevelt Island Park. And it is on the Potomac, on the accessible from the Roslyn, Virginia side, which is... Um, across the river from Georgetown, and it is a an, um, an island dedicated to the uh, to a memorial for uh, Roosevelt. And luckily, there's a park run on there every Saturday at 0900. And sometimes they cancel it if there's going to be treacherous conditions like extreme amounts of mud or a wash away or if the government closes or... Uh, what not. There will be an uh, uh, alert, um, but everybody is welcome to volunteer, and everybody is welcome to run. And by run, I also mean walk, uh, dawdle, um, bring your baby prams, and have a nice walk along the gravelly off-roady conditions and the beautiful uh, boardwalk and take a, a lasso loop, 5K. There's no limit to how fast or slow you need to be. And there will always be someone, including me, a tailwalker, to make sure that you don't feel like you're ever being rushed. And it's called Park Run. And jokingly, there's even t-shirts that say Park Walk. Um, I might see if there's one that says Park Jog. But either way, they're self-organized. I haven't been to Fletcher's or Anacostia or College Park. Uh, I've only been to Roosevelt Island. And the only reason I started going is because I know that I would never feel ready to go. So what I did is I went on to the parkrun.com website and I registered as a runner. And then I ordered, this is months before I actually went. I had aspirations months before I went. They give you a barcode. And the barcode is with you for life. And you have a barcode and a bar number. And you have a a, uh, a member number. And your barcode can be printed out and laminated into a card. Or you can participate in merchandise and get yourself a... Uh, what I have here is an orange park run um, bracelet. And it has my, my uh, barcode on it. And... Then I'm like, okay, I've got the barcode, I've got the registration, I've got the membership. And then I joined the emails that I would get. And this is years. For years, I would receive the park run emails. And they were always so friendly and always so funny and so well written. And it's a mail merge email. And it always felt like they were just inviting me, inviting me, inviting me. Volunteer, run, whatever. And eventually I just signed up as a volunteer and rode my bike there and met a little adorable 10-year-old girl whose mom and dad are from South Africa. And she taught me how to collect, how to, she taught me how to hand out um, barcode tickets that you get that associate you with timing. So what you do is you register ahead of time. 
you get your barcode, you get your number, and you don't let anybody know you're coming. It doesn't matter. You have to have your barcode, though. And then you go to whatever park run in the universe you want to go to if you want to run or walk or jog or slog or mosey. And you just line up at 0900. They give you a bunch of really detailed instructions. And off you go. And then uh, when you come back, there are two timers who come up with a number. And that number is associated with a little card that has a barcode on it. And that barcode, when scanned in, tracks your time and how you performed compared to other people in your uh, age class, etc. So, and it says whether you were the first person or whatever. And so for every time you go to Park Run, you will start build it, building data and you can get your PR and P. B and PJ and PQ and all those other things that you want to do. Uh, personal best, personal record are the two that I know what those mean. And, um, and then you can see progress, right? There's a lot of people who use the weekly park run to track their progress in the other parts of their lives. Like, let's say they do long distance running or they do uh, just jogging for health. What they do is on Saturday, they put the pedal to the metal and they see how well they can do. And week by week, it's sort of like a, a mathetone test. Week by week, you can see how your relative performance increases. Now, in, in America, the national sponsor of all American park runs is Brooks. Um, I don't get, as a volunteer, I've never gotten any Brooks. There are little rookie logos on things um the the park runs are gamified not only do you receive a uh a uh, a, a time and a ranking and a universal ranking and a global ranking and a comparison for your age group and for the whole race in general and all that other stuff all the um uh dorky mcdork face like baseball stats but you also start accruing kind of like a 12-step NAAAOA uh, meeting, Al-Anon meeting. You start accruing uh, chips, right? So in, uh, if you're recovering from alcoholism, you receive chips based on the number of days and number of years that you remain sober. In Park Run, there are two aspects to the gamification there are the number of runs you've done, and there are a number of volunteers you've done, right? So let's say I have eight volunteers and seven runs, or nine volunteers and eight runs, because I, I volunteered once without running. Um, when I get to 10, if I am under 15 or something, then I get celebrated on my 10th uh, volunteer and 10th run. I believe for adults, you get heralded, heralded at 25, at 50, at 75, at 100, at etc. And they And you get t-shirts, I think. I think at 25, you get a free t-shirt from Brooks. And it's a performance wear, and I think you can choose between... Uh, short sleeve and long sleeve, and it's polypropylene or something. And uh, and then you start receiving those things. And people have big celebrations when they get their 100th or 200th. Some people time it so that they get their volunteer and their run the same time, and then they'll want to be a tail walker because tail walkers are the only volunteer position that gets... Uh, horse walking credit and that's what i've been doing so for six seven eight nine times i have walked the, as a tail walker which results me in a volunteer which re results in my receiving a volunteer credit and also a run credit so i've been bogarting those and it still takes me when i'm walking around an hour and 10 minutes to do the 5k which means i'm wicked slow but slowly, I've been becoming more confident. Two weekends ago, I 
I tripped and did a commando roll and impressed my fellow tailwalker, apparently. I uh, didn't hurt myself or twist my ankle or anything, luckily. Thank you, Ellis Island, U.S. Marine Dad, for teaching me how to tuck and roll. And luckily, I've never had to fight with my elbows at Park Run, and may that never happen. Um, what else? Oh, after uh, everybody... So it takes, what, uh, 18, 15, 18, 17, 18, 19 minutes for uh, the top runners to arrive. And then when that happens, the first grouping, uh, one of the volunteers takes them up to Roslyn by walking or, or driving. And the first group goes and either goes to the Roslyn courtyard right next to the McDonald's and has a after run coffee hour just like church or also like 12 step or if it's rainy or, or the weather is inclement um they go to that um that kind of food court table service food court that's right on top of the Roslyn metro is it called continental or i don't know what it's called and you know i'm not the kind of person to look that stuff up and it's really fun like, no, but like one day I kind of got a little gimpy and it took me a, an hour, 20 minutes. Nobody complained. I felt so bad. I said, if you want me to stop being the tail walker, I'll totally take another volunteer position. And they're like, you're a volunteer. You do you, man. We're lucky to have you. And everybody's been so sweet. And I joined the volunteer uh, park run slack. And I feel like I've made friends and I uh, haven't seen my little 10-year-old trainer in, in weeks and weeks. But I'm not there for the 10-year-olds. I'm there for the community. And it was lovely to meet everybody. And slowly but surely and organically, I this is my family. This is my posse. Um, what This is what I do if I'm capable as in if work doesn't overtake me or if I'm not an AFib or if I'm not suffering from coronavirus or having irritable bowel syndrome or whatever. If I'm not um, in the gutter, then on Saturday, I always plan to be volunteering or one day, inshallah, 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 I will, I will run. And by running, I mean I will jog. And by jogging, I mean I will slow jog. And by slow jogging, I mean I will slog. And by slogging, I mean I will uh, clippy shuffle. Um, and you're welcome to join. I'm willing to share. Uh, in the summer, they reach almost maximum capacity because there is an entire subculture of people from the Commonwealth who and people from the United States who love using park runs as reasons to go and do vacation. So they will map their international travel based on accruing park runs that they've attended. And the first 10 minutes of, um, of, of, of announcements every morning before the run starts is uh, asking everybody where they're from. And there are people from Ireland and Scotland and Great Britain in Wales, and South Africa, and Australia, and New Zealand, and there are people from Canada, and students from Canada, and, and people from other park runs, and first-timers, and people who are celebrating their birthdays, and people who are celebrating their, their 25th and 50th, and some people have, carry sa sashes, and other people carry uh, wear capes, and on every date that is the 22nd, everybody wears tutus. So I think there was an April 22nd that I missed, but I bought a pink tutu to wear. So I've, I come looking at it right now, a, um, a pale pink taffeta tutu that I bought specifically for, uh, for racing. It's actually a subculture of people who race with tutus. Chris Abraham has a pale pink tutu mofos. And I was going to, I couldn't go yesterday, but I was going to wear my tutu for uh, Halloween. So you've still eluded me, tutu, but I will wear you. And I will wear you on my bicycle on, on en route 
en route. Um, so you're welcome to do that. And like I said, the only thing you need to pre-schedule for is for is register to get your 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 um your code. Like my code, I'm not going to give you my code, but my code also says that I have AFib, right? So, and it has a number for emergency contact, which is my friend Andrew. Andrew, if you don't want to be my contact, you don't have to be. And my number starts with an A. Right, so my number starts with an A. I'm looking at my orange um, barcode. The only thing you need to do right now is whether you ever use it is register for park run. It's going to ask you if you're in a running club. It's going to ask you what your home park run is. It's going to ask you all those things. Put it whatever. You can go anywhere with that barcode. If you print it out or have it on your phone or have it on the cute little arm band like I have, you don't have to sign up. You just show up. However, if you're a volunteer, you can just show up as a volunteer too. They always need extra hands. But it's easier for the people who organize the event that if you sign up. And if you go to, if you just search Park Run Roosevelt Island, you'll find their Park Run landing page and all the instructions are there. And they even ask for your help to sign up for um, volunteer positions. They're always super grateful and super excited. And if you get there at 845 or 830, depending on what your job is, they will give you instructions. They will give you a high-vis vest, most likely a yellow high-vis vest. We tailwalkers have sexy orange high-vis vests. And I bought a special pair of cool Nike uh, Trail Runner 4s, or whatever. Nike Pegasus Trail 4s, does that make sense? Uh, because it's gravelly enough, it's off-roady, it's parky enough, it's not just gravel roads, it's not just mud roads or fire roads. There's actually, you know, roots and stuff like that if you've ever been to Roosevelt Island. And nothing's closed for it. They, there are sometimes bird watchers or DC women who walk or, um, um, uh, uh official park tours there might be other runs uh two weeks ago there was a a um group of local reenactors of the tv show called survivor apparently uh there's a bunch of weirdos and by weirdos i mean respect how cool who literally reenact and play a game of survivor real life irl as sort of a live action role plays, live action kind of thing. And uh, there are people who are walking, there are people who are doing their own thing. And of course, the the um, the path is really well laid out. There's uh, there's cones and there's like mini cones and what are they called? They're called blister cones or whatever. And they mark every single defect of the trail. And there are boardwalks, so people are like, don't fall off the boardwalk. And the way it goes is it goes out. And then if you think of a lasso or a loop, so it goes out straight, and then it branches into uh, um, a left and right fork. You follow the right fork, and then you go all the way around and circle back, and then you, you, you come in. Uh, and that's five kilometers. So it's extremely visually stimulating. It's uh, not boring. You'll hear the rowers out in the river. You'll hear the coach um, yelling at them. You'll hear the coxswains yelling. Uh, you'll hear airplanes lifting off and landing from National Airport. You will see blue herons. You will see white egrets. You will possibly see ospreys. You might not see a bear. Uh, you might see a bear. Uh, you might see deer. You might see beaver. You might meet the man or woman of your dreams. Uh, you might make friends for life. You might join a slack group. You might decide it's not for you and you'd prefer to go Fletcher's or to College Park, or to um, Anacostia. I really want to try Anacostia one weekend. I also really want to try 
Fletcher's because Fletcher's is really a good memory of when Mark and I used to take those blue kayaks and we used to paddle all the way out to, to Fletcher's and then pull our boats up and kind of visit the lavatoire and get, I think there's a, a little like, like little coffee store there where you can get like water or, or soda or hot dogs maybe and a snack or something, coffee. And uh, so I'd like to do that too. That would give me a longer bike ride to Anacostia and a longer bike ride to Fletcher's. I don't think I will ever go to College Park unless uh, my buddy David Cohen or my buddy Roshana Cohen or my buddy Mike Crow or my buddy Kathleen Medlin, Catherine Medland uh, want to go. So I call out to you. Other than that, I would. Ne- I hope that Catherine never ever hears me call her Kathleen. So let's hope she doesn't listen to my podcast. So that's it. Um, you don't have to go to the coffee hour. Uh, a lot of people, what they do is they do their long run, right? Their twenty mile long run, and the way they do it is they long run to Roosevelt Island, and then they take a break. And then do the 5K. And then when they finish the 5K, instead of going to the coffee hour, they do the remaining 10 miles or whatever. Some people include it as part of their day. Some people ride their bike and include that as part of their ride. Other people walk over from Foggy Bottom or Georgetown or come down uh, from uh, Roslyn or come down from Courthouse. Other people like me... um, uh, bike, uh, from Columbia Pike, you know, five mile bike ride. It's really fun. Even, even, even during nasty weather. And, uh, I hope to do it all winter long. It'll make me more vigorous and rigorous. It'll make, it'll encourage me to return to this slow jogging routine that I want to do during the week in which I will return to tomorrow. I've been a little bit funny in the tummy over the last week. So I haven't done anything but walk with my ruck on but tomorrow i think i'm gonna do a little bunny hoppy kind of walky larky darky thing um one thing the tail walkers and i realize is the following which is park run can be your only once a week um run jog slog walk 5k you can you don't have to train for it you can it's 5k it's it's a it's a it's a park run, park jog, park walk. So you don't have to prepare for it. You don't have to train for it. You don't have to do anything. You can roll out of bed. It's not that early. Um, Here's say that some of the park runs in Australia start at seven or eight. Um, some of the park runs I found out in like Scotland start uh, half nine, which is nine thirty in American. It really depends. So 9 a.m. is pretty late on a Saturday morning for uh, nerdy uh, D.C. people. It's super early for disco people or for night people or for drinkers or for drunks or for party boys or for burners or for uh, 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 people who go to Duck Club and, and all that other stuff. People who like have lots of like Friday night sex probably don't want to get up that early either. So you sex maniacs um, might want to consider uh, avoiding uh, tantric ex- escapades the night before and come on down. Uh, I think it's a great place to kind of meet someone from a dating app to show them that you're legit. Uh, I think it's a great way to make friends if you're new to the area. I I can't encourage it more. So... Anyway, uh, just, you know, bloody well, just don't even go to your URL. I think it's parkrun.us, and I think parkrun.com is the general umbrella, and I think parkrun.uk and maybe parkrun.ie and maybe parkrun.za and maybe parkrun.au and maybe parkrun.ca and maybe, I don't know, I am only an excited new member. And like they say, in St. James's, in, in Trinity, 
in every church I've ever been to. The zeal of a new member is palpable. So here is my zeal. It approaches zealotry. I'm all wiggly about it. All size people. And, you know, the, the top three boys that finish one, two, and three are extremely handsome and charming. And I always make a joke every single week. I'm like, guys that handsome, young, and charming in D.C. don't have to be total menches. And yet these dudes are total menches. They're the sweetest, loveliest, helpful, most generous, kind guys. And the reason why I say that is to butter them up because they always tend to uh, do recon and to check to see if we're the tail walkers are completely burdened by um, by signs or by um, cones or by uh, dimple. They're called dimple cones or by any of those other things. So they are menschy McMensch faces. And I I am desperately in admiration of their generosity because when I was a handsome 20-something and a handsome 30-something and even a... Uh, a handsome 40 something. I was kind of a dick about it. So kudos to kind uh, and um, generous and uh, lovely young people who, even though they're fit and fast, hang around the race so as to do a little bit of the mopping up, right? They could be long gone. I think that probably they only take 15, 16, 17, 18 minutes to do the run and they could just be like exit stage left. And so. Um, I don't know. Like, I expected uh, limits in the kindness and generosity, and um, I don't think I'm actually charming. I think, like, I'm uh, uh, heavy set. I can be considered fat. My knees are achy. I don't arrive with a friend. I'm a new face. I don't know if I do or don't give off creepy vibes. I can be a lot... I'm a little bit chatty. I might sound mansplainy based on what you know from me from these podcasts. And everybody's been lovely. And it's awesome. So even though I do have the zeal of a a new, newly evangelized, brand new minted coin, I challenge you to come visit us at Roosevelt Island or just stop paying $35 for all of these like rando 5Ks. I mean, do not give up on pace run or pace whatever. Um, don't give up on the local 5Ks. Don't give up on on the amazing once a year um, Ireland's Four Quarts uh, St. Patrick's run. Don't give up on uh, the dog run. Don't give up on the the uh, the sunset Roslyn run. I mean, sorry, the sunset sunset. Uh, Crystal City runs or any of those things. Just realize that for free, no string. Show up if you're registered as a park run. All you need is your bloody barcode and you're in Lake Flynn. And it's fun. Roslyn is cool. Roosevelt Island is cool. Running is cool. Making new friends is cool. And joining a cult is cool. So on that note, I love you guys, and I will talk to you soon. And who knows how long this diatribe Ranty McRantface is. This was Season 6, Episode 10 of The Chris Abraham Show. Aloha and mahalo. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.